Okay, welcome. This video looks at how you interpret the data uh, using the free Excel template for cluster analysis. Now there is, this is the spreadsheet when you bring it up. I've got some data in there that I've just run. Uh, for extra information, there's a how to interpret a uh, little bit of information there for you and the website carries more information. But once you've you've come in, you've added your data, um, added your solver add-in if you need to. Okay, you will be pushed. This will run a macro, and you'll be pushed to this page where you uh, have variations for two, three, four, and five clusters. Okay, and you've got various maps and graphs to have a look at. Two pages of those, as well as the sum of squared errors. Okay, so what we're looking for is generally a, a lower error. So 2 is the highest. Obviously as we add more segments we'll reduce the error because we're getting a better reflection of the market uh, to the point where you have everybody in their own segment. Obviously that's impractical. So we're looking at either 2, two is ruled out but 3, 4 and 5 are acceptable. And we look across per segment the more even it is, the more reflective each average of the segment is. Where we've got significant variations, we've got three, which is quite reflective. Sorry, uh, three. The second one in the three cluster approach is quite effective, with the other two aren't as as uh, representative. So anytime we've got highs and lows here, this could be a concern. So this is tending to lead us to five based on sum of squared error. Um, basically, these two will, areas will, will graph the first two inputs, which for me is loyalty and usage. If you have multiple variables, I've got four in this case, obviously it doesn't graph it, but you've got a, a visual that you can use in a report or an assignment. And basically what it does is provide uh, all the respondents, and then how they've been classified per cluster, and then the average uh, based on those two variables, usage and loyalty. But because we've got four variables, we need to come here. So we've got the output for two, three, four, and then finally five uh, clusters. So what I've done, I've picked up this information. So we've got the variables there. We've got the average for the respondents that have been classified into the various segments and how many there, there are, uh, with, and the total sum of squared errors, etc. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste this into a PowerPoint to have a look at it further. Okay, so what I've done is I've just brought that data across, put it in PowerPoint so we can see it fairly clearly. Down the bottom here I have the average. This is the average consumer in the market or in our survey and I can compare each segment relative to the average. So in terms of loyalty this is scaled out of 10 so all of these numbers tend to be about average, force around average, age is probably a slightly younger uh, group in the survey and social class is you know, on a scale of 0 to 10 is a little bit higher but this is the survey data we're working with. And all we do is we go through each segment and basically describe it using the variables that we have. So segment one, for example, um, according to our output, there's 30% of people have been classified there. So 30 out of the 100 respondents we looked at. So it's the, it's the largest segment. And what we find is by comparing it to the average, we've got uh, they're generally slightly below loyalty, so I'll call them average loyalty, so I'll call them somewhat loyal. In terms of usage, they are slightly below average as well, so I'd probably call them light users, perhaps medium users, you could extend it into that. Um, age, they're slightly younger than the average, but they're very high social class. So this is your largest segment. Okay, so we just go through for each segment, what's the size of the segment, and relative to the average consumer, what do we know about them? 
And then you can see I've color coded them. I put green, meaning quite attractive. Now the reason this would be the most attractive segments, um, obviously they're slightly smaller, um, but together 17 and 15, that's 32% of the market, so a third of the market. And basically I'm very interested in the usage. So segment three and segment four are the high users. So this is going to be your bigger sale. So even though it's only 32% of consumers, in terms of the volume of the market is going to be much higher because these people are buying a lot of the product. So you might designate them as your target market. Okay, and we know something about them. So we've got heavy users, very loyal, older, uh, average social class. So we've got some factors that we can use. Obviously, we need to do things to retain these people if they're a current customer. Uh, they're going to be our, our ongoing income stream. And we need various loyalty incentives to retain them. If they're not our customers, we would need somewhat aggressive sales promotion tactics to try and get them to try our product. Okay, keeping in mind that they are um, middle social class, so they might be quite responded to to price offers, but also they're, they're older, so possibly a little bit more conservative. That gives you some clues to their media usage, more traditional media, I would assume. And our second group here, also quite high usage. Okay, they don't have uh, the same degree of loyalty. In fact, they're fractionally below, and that's an opportunity to win that business. So they're harder to retain, a little bit easier to get. So a lot of our sort of sales campaigns, our sales promotions will be focused here. Gray is a, a reasonable uh, segment and over here the yellow is um, not as attractive because we look at usage for one and two uh, they're, they're below they're sort of below average there for you the gray is a little bit more attractive because there are loyalty so if you do get them they will tend to stay loyal okay so just going back to our outputs now I've looked at uh, the five clusters so we go to, to segmentation maps here and I'm more interested in segments three and four and this is an opportunity to to show us how it would be mapped so you can see high loyalty high usage sort of mid mid range and the rest are clustered around separately and they're not as attractive for us and in terms of our central means Again, we've got all these charts here. Down the bottom, we go to the one, four, five segments. And we can see the ones we're interested in, which is segment three and segment four, the, the triangles and the black dots. Okay, so we've got a strong clustering of triangles here in terms of loyalty and usage. Um, this is more scattered. Segment four indicating there's more variability in the age and the social class. Okay, but basically we're able to take all that information and turn it into something worthwhile. Okay, I've just gone back to the input data to show you something else you can do. If you get um, some clusters you're not overly happy with, what I've done is I've gone through and deleted the age variable and then just rerun cluster analysis by clicking on it. So you're finding there's a variable that you don't think is unique or contributes to the clustering, you can just do that. Now I've already just run that. Um, and it'll just reproduce it. You can see there's nothing in here where age where age was. We go down to our five clusters and we've got quite a little bit different approach to the information as compared to before. Okay, I've just dropped that back into PowerPoint. As you can see, we've got the original uh, five clusters. Now I've run it without age and um, you can see the averages remain the same of course because we've got the same set of people but we've got slightly different variations. So segment five which is our 
would be equivalent to our segment three up here. High loyalty, high usage, and mid-range social class. So that hasn't hasn't changed much at all. But if you have a look at segment two, okay, that would that has been quite significantly redesigned. So here we've got a low usage. So this was segment two up here. But we're actually finding we've got a lot of people with quite low loyalty, once we've taken out the age thing, but they're quite high social class. So I have a look here. We've got uh, two segments, both high in social class, but one is low loyalty, low usage, and one's mid-range loyalty, mid-range usage. So we would target uh, certain social classes through media, and that gives us... Um, you know, a quite a different approach. Okay, so that's an extra thing you can do. Just play around with the variables, taking them in, in and out, rerunning cluster analysis, and hopefully getting a sense of a, a segmentation that makes sense. Uh, so all the best. Uh, remember, there's lots of information on the website for you.